I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Hey everybody, welcome back to Oops the Podcast. Happy New Year's Eve. I hope you guys had somewhat tolerable 2020s. I am Giulio Gallarotti, joined by Francis Ellis. Francis, happy New Year's Eve, buddy. Happy New Year's Eve, pal. How you doing? I'm great. I'm ready to rock. I'm ready to rip and roll, baby. Cool. Looking good, feeling good. Yeah. Love it all, man. This is, uh, by the way, I, I, everyone always, I feel like people listen to these podcasts as they're traveling back from wherever they went for New Year's Eve. Yes. Years, you know? Yes, that's so true. So I hope you had a nice time and that you're finding your travel seamless and without delay right alive not crossfaded mm-hmm. you know new year's is such an easier thing now because it's you can say happy new year to anybody you can't really say merry christmas anymore yeah. like you can but like someone emailed us and pointed out something interesting they're like you know my parents just kind of default to merry christmas when like you're not supposed to which which makes me think of something interesting. Do you profile people and decide whether or not it's okay to say Merry Christmas? No. Or do you just say Happy Holidays? You know. Is that an acceptable form of profiling? Look, <laughs> Schultz makes this point too in his most recent, in his one of his Netflix specials that he just did. Um, the, the, the so-called war on Christmas is so overblown, right? You say Merry Christmas to someone on the street Nine times out of ten, even if they're not someone who celebrates celebrates Christmas, they're not going to get mad at you right, for it. Right, right. They're not going to get. It would, it's crazy to get mad about that. Right, and right? frankly, is it? Is it? It's crazy to get mad about that. It's crazy because I know that if someone wished me Happy Hanukkah, I would I would not take any offense. I would I would still feel as if someone had said something nice to me, or if someone said you know Happy Kwanzaa or. No happy one would non-denominational say happy thing. What, whatever it is. <laughs> you know, someone wished me a happy Ramadan during the month of Ramadan. Like, right. yeah, I, I, I'd be like, cool. That's cool. I dig right. it, you right. know? Um, so I do think it's a little ridiculous. So I agree that, that it's overblown, but no one would ever wish you happy any of those things. You know, like no one was going to come up to you and say happy Hanukkah. Like, do people just say happy Hanukkah to each other? Like, I don't think yes, so. Yes, they do. Do they? They do, yeah. Yeah, dude, and and not only that, but I don't know if you've seen this. There's a a truck that drives around the streets of Manhattan with with an enormous inflatable menorah on top, blasting Hanukkah music as loud as it can. And then they have agents on the street who say, "Hey, bro, you Jewish?" Yes, that's right. They 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 very much proselytize, just as Christianity has done for millennia. But like you know, uh, I I don't I don't. It doesn't bother me. People shouldn't be bothered by it. I don't think so i'm gonna be honest that bothers me when those guys ask me if i'm jewish and i say no and then they don't talk to me anymore have you ever said yes i have yeah it's like a choose your own adventure just to, <laughs> <laughs> just to see what they're gonna say and then they give you a menorah they give you a menorah or they give you a plant oh i didn't know about the i've plant. gotten the because it's a gift how often are you saying yes to this dude oh uh, i did Regularly? once oh, okay. just because i was curious well, anyway, happy holidays. Yeah, I happy I holidays. Have... I also, <laughs> I don't feel like saying happy holidays is any less poignant or that you're being, you know, that, that we lose oh, the dude. magic of it. Absolutely. I don't feel, I have no qualms saying happy holidays. Yeah. It's the fucking holidays. Me. We're all happy. Let's include also, each other. Also, I think happy holidays includes New Year's. And so you're wishing someone a good Christmas or Hanukkah through New Year's, and that encompasses yeah. m- multiple holidays, right? Definitely. I, dude, I feel really good when I say Happy New Year to someone I don't know, and they say it back. I'm like, yeah. oh, that was great. Dude, <laughs> How you see, it's funny. A lot of your friends are, I think, in this world that we're in, right? Is it like what world are you talking Like about? comedy, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So this year is a really interesting year of, of you've got Christmas on a, I think it's on a Friday, Christmas Eve's on a Thursday. So a lot of people have Thursday and Friday off of the first week. And then the following week, New Year's Day is on the Friday and New Year's Eve is on the Thursday. So normally the normally the 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 weekends don't really line up that well. Right. There's some kind of crazy stuff going on in the middle. You got to take some time off. But this year, people with regular desk jobs have uh 
two four day weekends back to back. It's great. The stars have aligned for the working the working folk. Yeah. Um when was the last time you worked a job where you did not get where where, where you got Christmas Day and maybe some of Christmas Eve off? But, never. Before, but you had to work on December twenty third. Never. You've never worked a job? The, well, that I, you, I've worked a job, but I've never worked a job where you had to be, take a vacation day, pay yeah, PTO. Never. Boy, it's the worst. I bet is it? Once you now that we're in this world, I mean, granted, I I still have to take like vacation. Have my, you? Yeah. Do you currently? Uh, yeah, I have to work on the twenty third. Oh wow. That's yeah, crazy. but like I could theoretically get my work done ahead of time. Right. And right. and kind of you know, and also I've been I work from home even in normal times. Right. Right. So it's much easier. It's to much easier. Yeah. But when I was working for the district attorney's office oh yeah and it's so stringent i'm sure about being there on time making you know you get your vacation day and you get an, an allotment and you can't go over and you're not even supposed to use them all mm, i hate that yeah i hate how that's a thing like using your vacation makes you lazy right and there's like unwritten rules that are you get punished for well it. and then and then you work at these modern companies like at barstool you know they had a unlimited vacation day policy which ironically deterred people from right, using their right. vacation days more it's clever it's, it's like countries that legalize drug use and then see that drug use actually declines right exactly yeah. you're you're free to use it go ahead and then everyone's like ah it's not that fun anymore totally right? like a counterintuitive policy yeah. interesting man um, well dude on on a on our last episode mm. you had talked about how you get in trouble a lot yeah. for saying shit so I actually got in trouble for saying shit recently. Oh, good. And not really. Like, she wasn't actually mad at me. Like, she thought it was so funny that she wasn't actually mad. But my, I got in trouble with my girlfriend. Uh-huh. She had a UTI. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've and heard of that. my mom called and my parents asked me. And my parents will call me together, which is like cute, a cute thing to do. They'll be like, hello. They say it at the same time, too. It's like classic nice parent just that thing. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, they're ask, they asked how she was. And I told them that she had a UTI. Oh, um, which I didn't think was weird. Like I, I've learned that maybe it is, but yeah, I don't know if I, I would never have said that to my parents. <laughs> my mom then texted her being like, Hey, like, how's it going? Try this, try this. And my mom was like, or, or not my mom, my girlfriend was like, are you fucking serious? Yeah. Why would you tell them that? Then my dad calls her and he's like, Hey, <laughs> he, he called her to like, ask about what to get me for Christmas or something. But he like very hilariously was like, so how's your. How you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, your dad just asked me about my UTI. I'm going to kill you. She's like, but it's so hilarious that like, I guess I'm not actually going to kill you. But yeah. why the fuck did you think that was okay? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, they don't think it's like a sexual thing. They don't think that we got it, that you got it because of sex. Like, yeah. I don't know. I see Am that I point of view. I see that point of view <laughs> because women can get UTIs that are not related to sex. Right think i don't uh, i don't fucking know i i, I won't i won't pretend to be any i don't actually sort know of, uh, reproductive rights specialist <laughs> but it, what, what you I, what isn't aren't you supposed to drink cranberry juice is I that guess. the thing you're supposed to have and you take that medicine that makes your pee like look like gatorade uh -huh. which must be fun yeah you know it's a silver but i've lining. heard it's very painful yeah you know look the difference between a uti and a yeast infection that that eludes me i don't really know what the difference is between that can they are they both caused by sex? I think that they both can be, but don't necessarily have to exclusively be. Okay. You know? Got it. You know? So what is it? Is it bacteria that's up I, there? I I guess. Yeah. yeah, dude. Fucking Boy, if only we had a woman on the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, this must be like we were like, uh, what the uh, women out there just like a women's podcast, to us. being like, what? So what, the penis, you know, <laughs> does it go, does it bend backwards? <laughs> I don't know. So, all right, I have to say though, all these three-letter acronyms, urinary tract infection, right? They always, to me, you, they're so close to so many others. There's I U D which is intraurinary device or you intrauterine uterine device maybe right. it's then, the birth control that right. you put up for you five put in years the pin. yeah and then iud iud <laughs> no that's iud but then there's IED, ied which is improvised explosive, explosive device, device that has maimed so many of our 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 heroes and soldiers overseas totally. and those are two very close acronyms that mean very different things 
you've got UTI, you've got UTA. UTA in our world is, is a big agency. talent agency. UTI, urinary tract infection. The you know you start to sort of uh, I, I I I I conflate them. Yeah, it's confusing. I confuse them sometimes. A U yeah. Then there's A U B, which is American University of oh, Beirut. Beirut. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little bit of a stretch. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know well, if that one needed to. I hope you, I hope you come through that trouble uh, unscathed, my friend. I mean, I think I did. But I just thought it was like, yeah. uh, it's, it's a funny, like occasionally, it's really crazy to think you did absolutely nothing wrong and then to suddenly be shown that you did something wrong. Well, let me ask you this. And she wasn't that bad, but yeah. How, uh, how clear of an understanding do your parents have of your sex life? I think a fairly clear one. I don't know. Like they, they. I'm sure they assume that I'm doing that. Okay, but does it stop there, or yes. are they aware of like <laughs> the type of maybe birth control that your girlfriend? No, they don't on, know about or... any of that. No, they don't know about any of that. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. No. Of yeah. course not. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. No. It's not that talking about like sexual shit like that is not normal. I'm not like talking about birth control with my parents and stuff do you so. think that your parents think that you use condoms every time you have sex i don't think they think about it i need to start like marking these episodes as ones that my parents should and shouldn't listen to <laughs> 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 i'm like mom if there's an ellipses at the end of the episode do not listen do not listen <laughs> um okay interesting well i i, I want to transition really quickly sure. i have something unless you've got something no, else no go for that. it go for it um i was thinking about this uh the we're, we're coming into a year now where it's going to be a very wedding heavy year yes presuming that things the vaccine sorts things out a bit yeah but there are all these postponed weddings that have been rescheduled for this summer and then i already had a full slate of weddings for this summer anyway that were the yeah the first that's go crazy. that's crazy at them so it's going to be intense and i'm in a bunch of weddings which is an honor for me of course but um a friend of mine one of my very close friends um was making the point you know he's he's organizing his bachelor party he's going to do it in jackson hole it's going to be a, a ski trip in in march and i i said to him you know listen just this is going to be really fun i'm very excited but just be i think you should keep it in the back of your mind that some people that really matter to you might not be able to come yeah because for example right you know the, if let's say he had had his bachelor party this week i'm supposed to meet my niece hayes for the first time i would have recused myself from the bachelor party <laughs> to protect <laughs> the fact that i can still meet her right i love the use of recuse yeah and uh you know dude there's clandestine a, affairs there's another word i was gonna drop on you <laughs> in this episode which i was thinking about but it's it's hard to figure out do you know the word avuncular? No, that's a good one, though. It's an incredible word. What does it mean? All it means is uncle-like. <laughs> Evuncular? Avuncular with avuncular. an A. I am, now, I am so avuncular, dude. Exactly. Everybody calls me it, Uncle Julie. I'm like, dude, stop calling me it's Uncle the, Julie. It's the kind of funny, charming uncle. If you have like an, an old, an, a young, you know, an old-fashioned uncle... If that's our friendly uncle Julio, then you would be exhibiting <laughs> avuncular. A, avuncular traits. Tendencies, right. Well, dude, I think that calling somebody uncle who isn't actually an uncle is offensive because it implies that you're lonely and don't have your own family. Is and that? And therefore, they're bringing you in. Oh, Uncle Julio. Interesting. Give Uncle Julio a hug. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I think uncles are, <laughs> are cherished and are not, not necessarily single and... and uh, Absolutely. No. But... But... I, but uh, I'm not related. Oh, I if see. If I'm not related and you're like, oh, Uncle Julio, it just makes me feel lonely. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm not lonely. Yeah. Or am I? I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> well, so I'm an uncle for yes, the first time. Yes, congratulations, Yeah. Dude. And so I'm excited to become more avuncular. <laughs> I want to lean into the, uh, the to being avuncular. Now, here's, here's why <laughs> that word, if you look at it, it's A-V-U-N-C-U-L-A-R. So there's U-N-C, the U-N-C of uncle is in it. An L. Yeah, but oh, you're this is you, you are, okay. yeah. yeah. It's strange to me that that's how we would ad adjectify to turn uncle into like you would add av up front. It's what crazy. a strange way. Advuncular, 
Avuncular. Avuncular. That's a million dollar word for people out there. Avuncular, folks. Yeah. Be more avuncular this year. Back to my buddy's wedding, yes. right? So he's having it in Jackson Hole. He was like, yeah, I get that. People might not come. No problem. And he even gave me, he said he right up front, out. listen, if you don't think you can come, I'm not going to hold it against you. I get it. And I said, no, I, I think hopefully by March, I'll, I'll be really excited to come. And, and I'm totally on board. Absolutely. So uh, he's got like 13 confirmed right mm -hmm. now. Right? Out of how many? I'm not sure how many he invited. Okay. But he was looking at Airbnbs in Jackson Hole, right? Fun, and fun. there's one house that would comfortably sleep like 10 to 12. But it also, one of the reasons he chose it is that it has an adjacent house which he can also rent if more people confirm. But as he puts it, in, in wedding language, you hear things like house one and house two, <laughs> table one and table right, two, right. right? Bus one, bus two. And there's meaning yeah. behind you that. You start learning where you stand in this person's life. This is exactly what yeah. I want to talk yeah, about. This is good. The signs of determining your standing, your importance in the wedding. Totally. Right? So, <laughs> you know, I, I feel very confident I would be in house one, but then there's like the spillover. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, and one thing that can make, that could make one feel better about this is like, if you are part, if you are not part of like the greater group, you're going to end up in house two. Yeah. With a bunch of people you don't really know. If you're, and you need to expect that, right? Exactly. If you're um, in the wedding, if you're invited to the bachelor party but you're not in the wedding, you're probably not going to be in the house in house one. Right. But you can still be the guy who really leaves his imprint on the bachelor party <laughs> by making good toasts, showing up to everything on time, bringing uh, new things uh for people to do or or being the guy who shows up on the bus to the <laughs> ski mountain with a bottle of what a Beam. joint yeah exactly yeah it's dude. like oh that guy brought a lot of value now you can get an upgrade i've never have you ever seen someone <laughs> get upgraded from just being in the bachelor party to all of a sudden being a member of the wedding party I've never seen because that, he no. performed so well at the bachelor party <laughs> no, but that's great i've never seen I've that never either seen but this is the time for that with people making cancellations and covid and like there's an opportunity to be upgraded I would think so. I would, I would think, so. think so. Yeah, it's a little bit more of a fluid um, table setting situation. Uh, now, um, I will say that I've been. I, 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 this is this is weird, but depending on my friendship with the with the the groom, that can influence how hard I go at the bachelor party. Interesting. Like you're like you've earned me taking these mushrooms because we're so close. It's yeah. I <laughs> a buddy of mine did his bachelor party at uh the it was up at Saratoga Springs a couple oh, summers ago beautiful. uh for the when we went up for one of those big horse racing. And was weekends. this was this part of the your famous Uber ride? Home yeah, where the guy okay, had to drop okay, his gun yeah. off. The driver had to take his gun home. This is great, dude. This is like university learning. Yeah. You're learning things that like collide and cross. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Important parts of different parts of history, learning right. it at once. This is good. So <laughs> as you've probably gleaned, I am not the most resilient drunk. Meaning if I get too drunk, I find a bed and I go to sleep mm -hmm. until I recover, right? Um, and it would take a force of God, a hurricane, ripping the roof <laughs> off the hotel in order for me to stir from my slumber. Um, I'm just, I, 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 have, I have a very strong compass towards self-preservation. And when I know that I'm in a really bad state, I know what I need. And I wrap myself in blankets and lock myself off. Love it. Now, for this friend, who is probably one of my closest two friends, two or three friends, um he had his bachelor party and you know he went to the horse races the first day and i had a great time and made a bunch of money betting on the horses made like sixteen hundred dollars wow what? and then we went yeah it was nuts i bet i hit this like three horse trifecta what i was just reading like off the, like, of. the book that everyone had and oh. I, I got it like, lucky of following oh. the obvious advice of this one thing so then <laughs> um <laughs> we went to a bar after I got very drunk. We went back to the hotel room and uh, 
this was a big bachelor party. There were like 18 dudes, maybe, maybe even 20. Crazy. Spread across multiple hotel rooms. And I took a nap. Now, I was so fucked up that under most circumstances, people who know me in this group would have said Fran's gone for the night. Right, right. But around seven o'clock, the dinner bell rang. We had a dinner reservation in town. People had gone so hard that day that it, it was just impossible to get certain people out of their beds. Mm-hmm. But in that moment where someone woke me, shook me awake and was like, we've got dinner, I knew this, this, every part of this bachelor party I have to be at. Right, right, right. Because of how close right. I am to this So guy. you rallied for him. Exactly. Yes, that's now, good. Two friends of his didn't. Okay. And to this day, he holds it against them. Really? Yeah. It Damn, comes up dude. and it's awkward. Damn. And they've both issued Mia culpa apologies. I mean, they've they regret it. I know, but you know, what do they what do they expect? It's like I know, but th- that that's one of those things. Crazy, where, yeah. So we went to the dinner and it didn't help that at the dinner it turned into a table wide individualized toast to the groom where everyone took their turn to honor him by saying something about him and for them to oh, be missing man. that because it became this very effusive personalized you know oh man shrine to the groom did you over did you like get over the hump and party more did you drink at the dinner um, I, I, I toned it back a little at the dinner and I had a couple wines, but I also had like a, I got myself an espresso shot. Yeah. I will say that my speech was far from <laughs> <laughs> the most profound one, but it didn't matter. They, they were, he, he knew me so well and he knew how fucked up I was and that the fact that I had dragged myself out of the bed when I did and was at the dinner to him was the Herculean effort that meant everything. And so he didn't care that I might, I wasn't able to get my words as well out as I had wanted, but I was definitely outshined by let, let's say lesser people in the wedding. Yes. At that yes, yes. Toast. But dude, listen, you rallied and you got there. Yeah. And what I would say to anybody out there who's considering, you know, going hard on a bachelor party where they really need to perform and show up is wear your fucking bird dogs pants. That's dude. right. Where your goddamn that's absolutely pants. right because you can you can party in the morning wearing them you can go to sleep wearing them you can and win wake money back up at the horse races in your bird dog's pants and then they work perfectly fine at the dinner where your other two friends are losing their standing exactly yeah. the other two friends were not as prepared no when that dinner bell rang you had four minutes to get ready fortunately you already had pants on yeah because sure you, did. they're so goddamn comfortable you can sleep in the pants showered in them showered in showered. my pants. <laughs> Showered in Showed the pants. Showed up and the, uh, the guy at the restaurant was like, do you want a towel? And I was like, <laughs> get the fuck out of me. In my face. <laughs> These will dry. I'm working on my speech. <laughs> yeah, dude. And listen, you know, if you order your pair of bird dogs and there happen to be those two friends uh, who won't get out of bed. That's right. If you use your promo code OOPS, you will receive a pair of nunchucks that you can then threaten yeah. those sleeping friends with. Yeah. So if you don't get out of fucking bed, I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> With these nunchucks that I have that I have trained with, yeah, and I will take you down. So you better get your ass up in honor of Gary, yeah, or whoever. You can turn their brains is. into Humpty Dumpty cracked eggshells, like uh, Hugh Grant's victim in that HBO show, The Undoing, <laughs> uh, with those nunchucks if they don't get out of bed. So yeah, make right. sure make sure you use promo code Oops today to get your bird dogs at birddogs.com. There you go, love it, man. Back to Determining your standing in the wedding. Yes. You've officiated a wedding. I have. Do you think that that is a higher honor than being best man? Interesting. So they didn't have best man or best. Then you are so the, yes. the high. The high it, it was a high honor. And I would say, and actually that's not true. There was a best man. It was his brother. Oh, um, but that's always a, that's always a de facto, and it's choice. nice to ha- it's nice to have a brother just so you don't have to worry about that. I think it's nice that I don't have a brother so I can tell a friend just how much he means to me. Wow, that's great. I've always looked forward to being able to name a best man. But are you worried about showing your other friends how much they don't mean to you? Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck those guys. <laughs> They should have worked harder. Shots fired, guys. Now, if you're in Francis's life, make sure you come correct. If I have to be honest, if I gun to my head, if I had to pick a best man tomorrow, 
I don't know for sure if I if who I know who it's going to be. Oh, interesting. There is not a front runner right now. Wow, there's there, still an at large. There's like there are like had. four front runners. Crazy. Yeah, that's good, man. Yeah. Um. So anyway, so I, yeah, I def- I definitely felt like there was an honor. I kind of like was instrumental in introducing them to each other. So it wasn't super surprising, mm. um, but I'm obviously very, I'm very close with both of them. So it was, it was, a, it was a wonderful honor. This is no secret, by the way. It was a, our good friend Ricky Velez, yes, who was a guest on the podcast um, yes. many moons ago. You officiated their wedding, yes. down in Miami. It looked like a, a wonderful affair. Oh, dude, it was great. But it was funny. So the that Thursday night when we were all down there, we were at this dinner, and there was a moment where a guy at the wedding who was like not that close, like. He was definitely in the last 10% of the invites. Mm. He like somehow got an invite. A bubble invite. He was a bubble invite. He was a bubbler. <laughs> he was a bubble invite. Yeah. Uh, he gets up and gives a speech. Oh. And dude, I'm not, not only was the, sp- not only should he not have been giving a speech, but it was the worst speech. Had he never been to a wedding before? I don't know. Like he maybe had, but he was like really fucked up, bro. And he got up and he literally was like, yeah, I guess this is like a great night. Like. <laughs> Oh. Like trying to be funny. <laughs> and then he goes, and uh, if anyone wants to fuck me, I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. And he sat down and he actually got laid that night. <laughs> I can't believe it. Dude, everybody, when he gave that speech, it was the talk of the night. We're like, what the fuck was that? And he ended up getting laid. It was a fucking miracle, dude. It was a wedding miracle. He's probably wearing some bird dogs pants. <laughs> he might have been wearing bird dogs pants, dude. <laughs> so, so that that's spectacular. It was pretty good. Have you been in other weddings? Yes. Have you? So you've been part of the wedding party? Yeah, I've been best man before. Wow, um, damn, dude. For a cousin, um, and then like there were nights where they were like, we would like for you to give a speech, like in the rehearsal dinner, yeah, type of thing, um. And I've, I've spoken at rehearsal dinners. I've spoken great. during the ceremony of the wedding. Oh wow, which was super weird because I did a stand up routine. Yeah. So do you do you feel that? I feel that even though we are more uh, capable of giving a good speech because we're comedians, there also at, is an added element of pressure where people expect us to give really good speeches. Yeah, it's a nightmare. And I think, and tell me what you feel, how you feel about this. And especially, I mean, for Ricky's wedding, there's a ton of comedians there. Yeah. So you don't want to ham it up. No. You throw in one or two maybe, but like you you want to make those surprising and being sincere actually helps you. Yeah, because you know that they're all in the back being like, this oh, fucking God, hack. Oh God, here we go. This yeah, hack. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're judging your joke. So you tone it down a little bit there. But I think that for a normal wedding, it's it's... There's pressure, but it can be done with a little bit of preparation. It's easy to knock out of the park. Preparation is easy, yes. Do uh, you agree with that? I, I, I totally agree with it. And when in doubt, go sweet. You're Definitely. never gonna get you're never gonna go wrong with sweet. Dude, being funny can really hurt you it if can, you're not funny. It can. It can hurt. And then it's you, so cringe. Because if you miss the mark with the funny, you're also then seen as someone who wasn't being sweet. Yes. And you, you, you're you never going to go wrong with being sweet. Yeah. If you come in there trying to be Mr. Hotshot, fucking being funny and crossing the line, like there's just no reason for that. Like yeah. you're going to get everybody crying and if you're sweet. That's exactly right. Talk sweet. about the, the girl's dad. Right. right. That love, <laughs> that people love to hear about the, the father of the bride. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen a father and daughter that loved each other so much. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, but but you dabbing at the corner of their eyes. But the don't cross the line there either. Don't be like, ah, oh, we all know that Carl's wife has the hots for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody's like, what? Okay, yeah, I dude. can't wait to dance with his yeah. wife when she's not looking. Yeah. Um. So okay, all right. So you've been now. There is to me, there is a sweet spot that I like the most. Of, for in in terms of speaking of of being a guest at a wedding. Okay. And it is. The last groomsman to be named. Oh, that is a good sweet spot. That is a great spot. That is a good spot. Because. On draft day, you're sitting there. You're yeah, hoping for number you're, eight. You're an undrafted free agent. <laughs> you yeah. go play in Israel for a year. Yeah, exactly. You come back, get the two-week the two contract. You can get, a, you can get <laughs> as drunk as you want during the day, right? <laughs> you, there's no responsibility. Yeah, that's true. So you, you don't, you're not expected to give a speech. Right. You, uh, there's less of an ex- expectation of, I think, giving a really sizable money gift that oh, right. is commensurate with the position you were given at the wedding. 
Right. right. If you're best man, you got to give a really good money gift. Yeah. I, guess I right. think. Yeah. Now, so if you're the last guy, right, you're you're in fewer photos. Yeah. Less you're definitely in fewer photos. You sleep in. You're not following it around the whole thing as much. The The bride is not worried about you. Right. She wants the the hometown boys or the oldest friends that's who right. matters you want to be the even number groomsman the last guy that made it into an even number yeah that is the way dude one time I, this past goal. summer i was number 17 of 19 jesus that was a good spot that's insane it was a lot of groomsmen it's a lot of groomsmen. did you guys have to buy special like shirts or whatever um there was very very specific uh costume uh expectations it was like you, you, but I already had it. Oh, fortunately, that's good. that's good. The black tie stuff. Oh yeah. Um, so I think that that to me is the sweet spot. Have you ever found yourself being relegated? Like, did you ever did you ever get a position that was lower than what you would have thought? No. Uh, but also, like, if there ever was, I don't care. Like, especially it was at the time. Now, like, I feel a little bit more comfortable being able to like both make time to go to weddings and that i have money to do it yeah there was a period of time where i just like didn't feel like i had enough money to be like traveling around yeah. these weddings where i was actually like not going to some of them which i felt bad about but like i just couldn't um because it was too much like i was right. going to, like 10 15 weddings a year it started to become crazy it's crazy you know um so having said that if i had been relegated and i don't remember because i apparently didn't care but <laughs> it was a relief yes you know i am i yeah i am so relieved when people don't invite me to their wedding <laughs> but dude you know what was a, was a fun trick to do like yeah. back in the day if you get a plus one and you don't have a girlfriend to just like invite a girl that you just met is really fun yeah, you did that i never got to I've do done that, that a bunch of times i wish i could have done that that would have been fun it's really fun yeah 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 whatever <laughs> oh well um, um, i'm sorry i cut you off about uh no re that's relegation. it that's it i don't i i've been at the bottom of the totem pole I haven't been to many weddings where I wasn't in the wedding. I did go to a wedding where I was invited to the bachelor party, but I was not in the wedding. And that felt a little bit sad. Oh, wow. You weren't invited to the bachelor party? I was, I was invited to the bachelor oh. party. I went on the bachelor party, but I was not in the wedding. Oh, oh, oh. Eh. Well, because then I was sitting at a table, right, where... I was clearly among the second tier of right. friends, even though I felt so invested in the wedding because the bachelor party was such a bonding right. celebration already of the groom right? and the fact that he was getting married. right? So it's as if I did all the coursework, you know, I did the initiation for the wedding, but then I didn't, I didn't, I got, someone found out that I was colorblind, so I never got to fly the jets. <laughs> So to speak. Right, you did all the training, but never yeah. got to actually see combat. I never got to see combat. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a bummer, but whatever, yeah. dude. All good. All fucking good. Um, what are we at there, Chris? Okay, I got I got some stuff. Bring us bring us a new idea here, Julio. Um, all right. So Francis, famously last year, I don't know if calling it famously is a is an overshot, but famously last year, you had said that you didn't have any New Year's resolutions, if mm. I remember correctly. I think I think I said that I wanted to call my parents more. Did I not say that? Chris, do you have any insight? I don't remember. I don't know. Maybe well, I remember calling my parents every day and then after about three months or four months I started it started turning into every other day. <laughs> I still talk to them a good amount, but That's it's not every day. Well, I don't with me I don't remember if you said that on the podcast or not. You may have. I don't know, whatever. But this year, do you have any New Year's resolutions? Um Well, I haven't thought about it. I had one, but I can't remember what it was. I I think to me it's got to be I just don't want to get in trouble as much. <laughs> I know we've talked about the I, my new year's resolution is just not not get in trouble <laughs> as much. I've just been getting in way too much trouble and I don't like I hate it. You're just getting in trouble, man. I hate a being, mischievous young man. I hate being told off. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. Hey man. We got to talk. Yeah. Oh, God. I have fucking PTSD every time I hear those words. So what's yours? What do you got? Dude, I think mine is that I want to be a better lover. Come on. I think I want to be, I want to like knock my girl's socks off. Whoa. 
<laughs> That's a pretty good one. It's my New Year's resolution. I mean, it's unclear like where she stands on this right now. <laughs> And this is gonna. I'm sure she's gonna be upset with me for this. Um, you be, are you? Is there a part of you that's like, hey, babe, I've decided, I've resolved to be better lover, and she'd be like, what? No, you don't understand. It can't get any better. You you are doing it so well. You think there's there's a chance? No. She doesn't think it could get any better. There's no chance. That it, <laughs> <laughs> there's no chance that it can't get better. Yeah, yeah. And you know, from my perspective, I think it's like pretty pretty solid. You know, I'm yeah. happy, but like. We've talked about this before. You know, I'm not good at sex. <laughs> I want to knock her socks. I think we could be. I think we could do it well. I'd like to be really good. What are you going to do? Are you going to read some books? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you going to... What do you... Like, what else? I'm just going to, like, spend the time. I'm, I'm going to do the things that need to Dude, be done. I'm going to pace myself. I'm going to... That Those are the things. Pacing, uh, you know, uh, just trying to be really attentive without being like should, what should i do yeah you know yeah. what i mean just yeah. like try to just be fucking awesome uh-huh you know and i like to think that we have like a good groove as it is but i want to like step it up for her i think that's really smart in her honor lighting candles is is a huge step i like that and uh i did it the other day and um it, it just meant so much to her Really? Yeah, I think mostly because was she, she anticipating it, or did you? No, like the, we hadn't like done it. Set? We hadn't done it in forever, and um, I lit these candles, and she came in, and all of a sudden, it was it was as if she was coming into like a, I don't know, some kind of satanic ceremony. <laughs> like, like we were your firstborn child would be Satan's. A child. There was a there was a gloom, <laughs> like a, a, a spooky gloom to it. You know, the candles were casting these long shadows off the off the curtains as they flick. <laughs> Put it back and forth, and you didn't know if we were about to find some sort of blood-soaked calf, <laughs> baby pig, or the some sacrificial kind of, lamb. Yeah, dude, that's to great. Consummate the act. Um, but those little things go a long way, you yeah. know. And especially as your, you know, your relationships out there kind of take those next steps as far as becoming developed, mature relationships. It's definitely important to like prioritize making sex special and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, because. Um, yeah, I I gotta be honest. That's true. I I just been I've just been expecting that to keep going the path is fine, and I know it's not. Right? No, dude. Like, but but this is good. You know, you you're aware. You know, you're lighting candles. You're fucking <sighs> doing what you gotta do. My advice to anybody out there: once things return to normal, you're at a party with your girlfriend, an apartment party. Take her in the bathroom, bang take her, her out. Take her in the bathroom. Take your girl in the bathroom, yeah. bang her out. You're she'll at dinner. Be, she'll take be her to the shocked. bathroom. She'll be shocked. Yeah. Text her being like, I want to bang you right now. Yeah. And she'll be fucking psyched. Sex your girlfriend. Sex your girlfriend amongst others. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sex her be like, hey baby, like I'm, I can see under the table. Whatever the fuck you want to say. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That be sounds fun. fun. That sounds, sounds really fun. fun. You know? Um it also sounds difficult. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of of things could go wrong. Yeah, they could. But That's I don't, I don't know why. Um <laughs> god, it's so funny, dude. Sex is I I'm with you, man. My moves are bad. My moves are bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, here we go. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> you know, we 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 take our clothes off before I I don't want to I don't want to say too much. <laughs> this is this is what I get in trouble for. <laughs> so much. Five hundred words after the New Year's resolution, yeah, he exactly. immediately steps in shit. Yeah, stepping in it. Um. Well, dude, I I have a good pivot then. Something else. We okay. Talk about. Did you hear about the Martin Shkreli thing? Um. No. Speaking of sex. No. Really quick to... story. Go ahead, go ahead. There was a, a a a journalist, a woman, who young woman, New York woman, was writing for. Uh, she's writing for BuzzFeed. Ugh. Might have been Bloomberg, Bloomberg News, one of those. And uh, you know Martin Shkreli, right? Yeah. So Martin Shkreli, if you for those of you who don't know, famous fraudster. He's kind of a, a public <laughs> enemy number one. He's he's a roundly despised figure in in culture because he famously bought a life saving anti parasite drug. And then the day or so after he bought it, he hiked the price from five dollars to seven hundred and fifty dollars, which was within his rights, but uh, made it so that a it's drug like a that people not needed was now out of you know they couldn't afford it. 
and uh, everyone hated him for it, and so whatever. And then he was found <laughs> of having committed fraud when he worked for a hedge fund years earlier, and now he's serving a seven-year sentence in prison. And he also bought the the single copy Wu Tang album and vowed to never let anyone hear it. I don't understand that part. Why did Wu Tang? I mean, part of that has to be up on them. Well, they were just kind of like they created an al- a whole album, and only released one copy, just to him. And you know, it it caught a pretty high price tag. He paid two million dollars for a it. A clever move for you know they're not necessarily getting those downloads like they used to for their new shit. You you think that they would have made more than you don't think they would have made more than two million dollars on an album no really yeah definitely not okay they're, you know they're touring than anyway do. they don't need they don't need a new fine you know what i mean but so but, he yeah. bought the one of one and, and he's then, kept it for himself. i think he's even never listened to it himself either or something like, he was like and, he, and he was a dick about him anyway continue so he's in jail this woman starts reporting on him by the way when he was going to trial she's one of the people who broke the news that he had been convicted oh, okay so she was like reporting on him and also telling people like this guy you know it's a bad has, dude he, yeah i don't know if she was going that far she was pretty i think uh unbiased early on or whatever okay. but as she started trying to get more and more access to him she started visiting him in prison to write a potential book on him and all of this she ends up falling in love oh, with him baby Here right we go. they kiss each other one day in the meeting area at the prison <laughs> in front of a place that famously in the article it said that it smelled like chicken fingers <laughs> painting the picture she knows she says that she's married boy she divorces her husband jesus to be with shkreli who by the way can't can't leave prison and he convinces her that she should freeze her eggs so that when they get out of prison they can have kids together wow next thing you know <laughs> crazy shkreli dumps her and like ghosts her from, and now from prison yeah yeah <laughs> and and now <coughs> she is still holding out hope that they'll like get back together jesus dude and she was like fired from her job as a journalist and she's oh my god she's just gone completely rogue she went and did this big profile for for l or yeah, L Magazine, I think. And it was there that she told this whole story. Jesus. Bro. And you go on her Twitter, man, and she's like defending herself. And it's weird, too, because she's trying to, to also draw attention to bad prison conditions and the plight of prisoners, especially, you know, as they're unfortunately prisons are ground zero for COVID. And right. it's like crazy, not not humane. Um, and so she's actually doing a, a pretty good job of, of drawing attention to this, but everyone's like, you're a crazy person. Look what you did. This guy's the worst person. Ever. Everyone, everyone hates Martin Shkreli. <sighs> yeah. And so it's this weird balance, but check her out. Uh, it, it's a really interesting story. Dude. So many like arch criminals like that, who are like the stories that are well covered and they kind of become these notorious figures in society. They all find girlfriends while they're in jail. Well, it's. It's sort of bad like boy the fantasy. vow. The ultimate bad boy fantasy. These guys somehow... It's crazy, man. This common thread between these horrible men is that they are having plenty of relationships. Like they yeah. have a, they, They're so manipulative that they find ways to seduce people. Yeah. No matter, you know, no matter what. Totally. And it's that's a dangerous co- type of person. He, who else found girlfriends in prison? This guy that I knew who, well, I think like, well, first of all, like Ted Bundy. Yeah. Like those guys. Exactly. Kind of, like he exactly. had like tons of admirers. This other guy that I know who's like a friend of a friend, whatever. He, this guy was like worked for Hillary Clinton, uh, his campaign. He got in trouble for embezzling a bunch of money and he like found some rich girlfriend while he was in jail hmm. and now got out and is like living large with this new girlfriend. Like you hear about this kind of shit all the time. I don't know if Madoff did. Or what his deal old. was. Yeah, he's pretty old. But like for the most part, like you hear these stories all the time and it's like crazy that it happens. Well, there is a celebrity that is afforded for better or for worse to high profile criminals. And sometimes when people get very swept up in the court case and the coverage around it, that doesn't die just because those people have gone off to prison. Right. And as was the case with this girl, she went to prison to visit him to kind of work on a story about him. And through their 
intimate conversations and you know maybe it's him reeling her in but either way it's her getting a, a, a different glimpse of him than has been portrayed in the public light exactly she ends up falling in love with him yep He's um, misunderstood. He's actually really sweet. Blah, blah, blah. That's what that. she keeps saying. Yeah. Crazy dude. So what were you going to pivot us to earlier oh, before I got into that? Um, so I got one more thing here. Uh, and it's crazy. But dude, I've actually started counting sheep to fall asleep. And literally, I can't even get to 10. I, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And this is my process of the sheep counting. Okay. Francis is literally falling asleep as I tell this. <laughs> Did make That's how effective... Here. That's how effective this method is. I picture the sheep entering the foreground before a fence. I then picture the sheep hopping over the fence and then continuing running a couple more steps before it's out of the frame. I picture that. And that's one. And that's one. And that like takes a second. It takes a second to put that together. It's like the sheep enters, the sheep jumps gracefully over the fence, and the sheep then scampers out of the frame. And I, I challenge you to try it. I'm not even kidding you. The other night I got to 10 for the first time, and it was like a shocking thing. That I made it past and 10. then And then did you fall asleep? Yes, I didn't make it to 20. I was done. Down, gone. Boy. <laughs> Give it a try. That's so strange. <laughs> I don't know that I, I... I guarantee you I could get higher than 10. Give it a try. Because I, I struggle to fall asleep. <laughs> I sometimes do too. And there's something about counting sheep. It's like the same way that like... It, this is why it must be kind of like a stereotype or like a cliche. Because... Something about using that part of your brain makes you tired. Like the same with that, like reading will make you tired. Why? Why wouldn't it counting dogs? I'm sure that counting anything would work for some. I don't know do how the sheep. Same thing. I don't know how sheep got the PR boost. Why do they need to jump the fence? I'm not sure. I think it's something about constructing this thing in your brain that like makes your brain tired. Do you picture a massive group of sheep waiting their turn? So I can't see that far. I so that's a good question. The frame the frame ends in the there's there's the place for the sheep to enter, the place for it to jump, and the place for it to dismount and then scamper off and that's all that there is in my, in the frame. And they're animated sheep. Oh my god. <laughs> they are animated sheep. Yeah. <laughs> what where does the first the one that's ahead go once it's jumped the fence? Where does it go? Okay, so it leaps the fence and then lands and then goes out of the frame. So I don't know what happens. Oh, it goes left or it's, right? It takes it, it a turn? starts it starts left and then dun, 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 dun. there's no music, but like it then jumps and then lands <laughs> and then goes off. Sounds pretty exciting, actually. <laughs> no no noise either. You don't hear them baying. I don't hear them baying. Is that what how you say that? Bang? Bleating? No, no. I just bleating you know. might be the bleating sheep. B -L -E -A -T -I -N -G. You know the word for everything. Uh, bay, Jump, might be what we're going to scamper off. Okay, okay. Um, fascinating. <laughs> when you have a surgery performed and they're putting you under anesthesia and they tell you to count down uh, from ten, how far do you get? I've only had one procedure done, and I don't think I made it to three. I think I got to seven. Oh, that's impressive. This is for wisdom. From no, I'm saying wisdom. I got from ten to seven. Oh, with the countdown. I, I believe think, I had a count up. Really? Maybe not. Yeah. But you might be right. You, they always make the same joke when they're doing it. What do they say? They say, "Got a little cocktail here for you." Oh, uh, they're like, "Yeah." Oh, That's what they like say. This. Have That's you heard good. them say that? What'd they say to you? Come on! Come on, Chris. What, what were they like? Show me your dick. Like, what would they have said to you that you don't no, want to I share now? Thought, I thought your you were going to say something that like sparked in my brain, but it didn't. So that's so you didn't me remember. No. Interesting. For me, it, it's oh, I've heard it a couple times. By the way, I've had so many surgeries. That sucks, dude. Uh, but uh, they they said to me, uh, I've got a little cocktail for you. Have a little, <laughs> have a little cocktail. And it's always the anest the anesthesiologist is always the the most chipper person in the room. Because he's got, he's got one job. Granted, it's a difficult it's job. It's a fucking tough one. He's got to know you know the right dosage. But he knocks you out. Then the other guy's doing the cutting. You know. Oh God, cutting. Yeah. Good God. Well, happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> yeah. On that note. <laughs> Good luck. Let us know your resolutions. We'd yeah. like to hear if anybody has any odd resolutions. That's kind of always a fun thing. Yeah. Um. And good luck to all you. You know. Thanks for supporting us this is we're going on to our third year not our third complete year but this is our third year of doing this podcast so that's pretty exciting so welcome to all the new listeners mm. and uh for those of you who've been with us from the beginning thank you for uh, your loyalty mm -hmm. check out our youtube channel um and let us know what's up at oops the podcast oops the podcast at gmail.com love to hear from you bingo there thank you thanks guys
Guys, if you like this video, we got plenty of other videos. Just click and subscribe and check them out. Thank you very much. Oops.